Are you ready for an open discussion with the best of the best and the best of what's next? Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Join in on a great conversation today with some of the world's great influencers as they showcase great advice and techniques that made them the game changers they are today. Now, here's Tony D'Urso. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We're chatting with someone at the top of their category, an elite entrepreneur. We're going to talk about outreach topics with Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffee. Now, here you are. You're pushing the envelope to get your company up to the next higher level or back to its former glory. And even if you're starting up something new or a new project maybe within your company, there's more to it than just chasing the buck. And while that's all good for now, because we all want to eat and provide for our families, I consider today's topic like like cruising on the freeway. When you want to go faster, you step on the gas. Well, what is the gas? For a lot of us, I think it can be some of the community outreach topics that we're going to chat about. I know you're a business person and you're probably wondering, what's that got to do with me? How can it help my business grow to the next level? That is an excellent and fair question. So have a listen to this kind of work that's being done in the field and use that to stimulate your company's growth. There's some great topics here. Stick with me. And remember, as always, this is all designed to help you and your friends turn your vision into reality. Meet Lindsay Coffey. She's a model and environmental activist whose talents led her to be crowned the first U.S. representative as Miss Earth in 2020. Her key initiatives are on creating environmental awareness and green solutions, protecting our natural resources, and addressing the water crisis. She's an advocate for climate justice. She focuses on racial inequality, economic disparity, and their impact on sustainability. So let's just jump in and get into it. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to chat today and just engage with you and all of your listeners. So I'm super excited. Thank you. The honor is mine. And we're so much looking forward to learning about outreach topics and maybe uh, get some light bulbs in our head, spark some uh, different ideas of what we can do to get our business out there, help others as well as us. Because I think when we help others, in different ways, that comes back to us, even though that's not necessarily the purpose, though a businessman can help others to bring that in. But it just always comes back when we do that. So, oh, and I know that from a lot of experience. But just before we get into all of that, Lindsay, can you tell us how did it all start for you? What's your backstory? Well, my backstory. So I grew up in a very, very small town in Centerville, Pennsylvania, where there were more cows than people that small. I actually had cows as my next door neighbors. And I just grew up outside. I played a lot of sports. I was just hiking. I was involved in a lot of outdoor activities like quad riding and just really just playing outside and adventuring and exploring. So I... I grew up, I found myself wanting to just have, you know, a little bit more of my, more out of my small town and kind of experience the city life. So I was scouted whenever I was 12 for modeling and I never really pursued it because I was kind of just so enticed by my childhood playing outdoors and having that lifestyle. So it wasn't until high school, college, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try out this whole modeling thing. See kind of, see kind of what happens. So I went to New York. I ended up getting signed. I moved to the city. So I like to say I've had the best of both worlds growing up where I'm a country girl, but also, you know, living that city life. Um, throughout modeling, I have really was able to travel a lot, see more of the world that just kind of broadened my connection with it, where I already thought I was just this nature like guru. And it just increased more whenever I was given the chance to see what this world offers us and seeing the different cultures, the different people connecting with them, and just being a more well-rounded individual, which all of these qualities I've obtained through um, just my childhood modeling and now my activism has well-equipped me to move forward in life in all aspects, because no matter what we're doing these days, whenever we're passionate about something, 
we turn it into a type of business. And so everything that I've been through kind of grounded me and gave me those characteristics to really um, create a, uh, a future for myself. And then with all of this whole COVID thing that we experienced, that even introduced me into the pageantry world where I was crowned Miss Earth and kind of floored my environmentalism. So I'm excited to chat with you all about that today. It's a really interesting story. Now, here you are, country girl. I get that. You could have gone anywhere in life. You could be, you could have opened up a bar, a restaurant. You could have worked on animals. You could have had any and every kind of business, but something kind of sparked you to go for modeling and eventually run or run or compete, whatever the wording is, and apply for Miss Earth. Tell me about that vision that you saw that that put you down this runway? Oh boy. So honestly, since I had no experience in pageantry, which Miss Earth is a beauty pageant, I honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect. All I had was my imagination, which better yet said is my vision regarding it. And I kept visualizing opportunity the entire time. I visualized the doors that would open for me being crowned Miss Earth, having that platform, the contacts of organizations I've always wanted to work with. I envisioned hope for a better future the ability to educate others by spreading the cause, growth of who I am as a person. And I envisioned unity between American citizens as well as between nations. We've seen so much divide, especially in these past few years. So as Miss Earth is an international title, I felt there would be a connection not only to my country, but to the rest of the world. So you're given this international platform people listening in the millions. And I visualized how easy it would be to be seen and heard. And, you know, after the fact, when it was all said and done, I realized visualizing is so crucial to success. And the more you see it in your mind, the more likely it will come to fruition. In a way, I like to say you can predict the future if you will it to happen. And that's important to remember in every aspect of life when it comes to pageantry um, or business. Lindsay, you've you've mentioned it a little bit here in telling your life story and why you do this. And do you feel that you're actually able to make a difference? Do you have this? I, I get that you have this purpose to help others and help the world and, and help bring people together. And do you feel this is a platform to help that? Do you feel that you're able to rally and get people behind this? Is is the, I'm just kind of looking for the purpose and really why you're doing this. Well. When you ask a child what they want to be when they grow up, many of them say a hero. Quite a few, actually. And I truly feel most people at one point in time have that voice in their head saying, I want to be a hero. I want to change the world. And I've had that voice in my head for a long time. And it was a voice I could no longer keep quiet. So no matter how incapable I felt I was, no matter how much I doubted myself, I had an overwhelming feeling telling me that it was time to listen to that voice. And Miss Earth stands for something that I already believed in, protecting our planet, living harmoniously within nature as life intended. So ever since I was young, I was that environmentalist before I even really knew what that term meant. And I had an emotional connection to nature, treating the outdoors as my personal sanctuary where I would go to feel at peace. And the beauty of my surroundings, the animals, the vibrant life moving around me as I stood completely still, everything working against yet with each other translated that there was a resilient and beautiful world filled with wonder that I completely yearned for. And so I always took care of my surroundings. I adopted a highway as a young teenager, picking up litter and just volunteering when I could, you know, like the little things. And so... But in 2018, I experienced my first natural disaster. So I was living in Cape Town, South Africa during the water shortage that made international headlines. And the media then coined the phrase day zero, which created a countdown to the day that we would officially run out of water. So all the water in the stores were completely sold out. Other countries came to our aid shipping as much water as they, they could. And citizens would even line in the streets with buckets for state officials to fill up so they could take the water home to their families. So although I was fortunate to have a limited supply, a restricted amount of water flow through my apartment, I had to completely change my day-to-day -day life. I was completely terrified. 
I wanted to run back to America, if I'm being honest, where I didn't have to face that problem, but soon realized at that moment, running was truly only a short-term solution and delayed the inevitable. And Cape Town being one of the first countries to run out of water, I realized it wouldn't be the last. And I stayed, I endured, and I celebrated with the country when we did not reach day zero. And that was the first time I really experienced the devastation of humanity's impact on our earth. And that was the day that the climate crisis became my reality. So to get to the point, (laughs) I'm doing this because I want to see a change in the world. I want to ignite a passion and inspire action in others. I'm doing this to save our only home, to prevent natural disasters. I'm doing this for others like myself, aspiring climate activists who doubt themselves that want to make a difference, but don't know where to start. So I'm doing this because I believe in the capability of others when they're educated and inspired. And ultimately, I'm doing this because I believe in life. That's a heavy, that's a heavy answer, but that's why I'm doing it in a nutshell. It's a great answer. I love your enthusiasm, your exuberance. No wonder you're Miss Earth 2020. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And we are talking with Or is that correct grammar? We are speaking with, yes, we are speaking with Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffee, and you can find her at Lindsay Coffee, Lindsay Dash Coffee.com. I'll spell the whole thing L I N D S E Y Dash C O F F E Y, Lindsay Dash Coffee.com. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. All right. Lindsay, let's jump into your vision path here and explore this. Let's take it from when you were Miss Earth. What kind of do, what kind of work did you do for Miss Earth? So with Miss Earth, the main goal is to inspire and to educate. We utilize our platforms and our natural gifts to create change. I love to volunteer. I participate in cleanups on land and in water, which can get very, very messy. Sustainable farming, food drives, animal rehabilitation, which oh, always touches my heart and can also be heartbreaking. And also eco-friendly, do-it-yourself projects. Really, the opportunities are endless when you're trying to, you know, help others and help the planet. But I also enjoy speaking at summits, conferences, schools, webinars to educate on specific topics regarding the climate crisis and how others can get involved in their community as one of the most often questions is how we can get involved, which I would love to talk about later. Um, We also have a decent amount of travel on our itinerary as we are Miss Earth. So we visit all of Earth. It is an international title. So we're visiting other countries to help spread the cause as well. And as I always say, we are not only citizens of our nation, but of the world. We know it takes collective action between countries to solve this crisis. That is why we are raising awareness, not just on our home turf, but internationally. And furthermore, collaborations are also a goal partnering up with other organizations nationally and internationally who share the same passion and desire to make a difference. I've teamed up with WWF, uh, Greenpeace International, Climate Reality, where I'm a climate reality leader, Food for Life Global, um, just to name a few. And by connecting with other organizations, you create a broader audience, creating more of an impact. So honestly, Tony, Miss Earth is no typical beauty pageant. It truly is a mission of its own. It's had the same mission since its get-go from uh, 21 years ago. It's truly a full-time job, and it's definitely not the nine-to-five type either. There's a lot that goes into it, and you're working all the all the time internationally with a bunch of different time zones. So you're always you're always working the job. Honestly, it's never over because there's a lot of issues that we're facing that we have to address. And I know for our audience out here, we we're looking to help our business. We're looking for things to stimulate. And we're going to get there. We're going to we're going to get into it. Just kind of let this evolve and let this grow. And then you'll see how this could be really something a good more than just a tool that you can utilize to help others as well as help your business. And uh, I want to make sure that we understand one thing, because I've never really understood it myself and maybe some of the audience. We think of a beauty pageant as just that. It's a beauty pageant, but it's, you know, who's the best or the best looking or so on or the most talented, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot more mm-hmm. to it. And I would love it if you could tell us really what what's behind this and how does that how does that help our environment and our world? 
Yes, of course. Everyone has their typical views of beauty pageants. So first, the short answer to that question, beauty pageants can change the world depending on how they utilize their platforms. They have the ability to enact change as they do have a massive following um, virtually and even physically whenever you know, you're allowed to have people at the show. So that there's a ton, there's millions of people that will just engage with these beauty pageants. They're attention grabbers. It's it's entertainment is what it is. So to elongate this answer, because it's really actually fun to break it down, um, Miss Earth specifically utilizes the entertainment industry by turning it into an opportunity to share their mission and to be heard. It's like any business. You produce something that the mass public enjoys and desires in exchange for some sort of profit. In the case of Miss Earth, our profit is the exposure of our platform, which in turn produces a beneficial outcome for the planet. So let's break this down to the question, what is beauty? Studies have shown that there are general characteristics that define beauty. And to name a few, physically, you have uh, symmetry, height, um, skin homogeneity, uh, and behaviorally, you have confidence, intelligence, and ambition. And now what are beauty pageants? So beauty pageants, they're a competition with attractive, confident, intelligent women who are kind and also ambitious. It's like beauty pageants are like window shopping. The window display grabs your attention, and then you wander around the store to see what else they have to offer. Now, but this is also where why beauty pageants have that stigma surrounding them as outdated and superficial because some of those people see that display but continue walking and they never actually enter the store. So back to those that do enter, they stay for the appeal and find out that these women actually have something to say. They're not just there for looks and entertainment. And by constantly appealing to the masses and expanding their audience, beauty pageants can create real change. It's all, all, all about breaking down that barrier. Barrier. You grab their attention and it's just how to, how to keep that attention. And you find that in business all the time where you have this product and you have a flashy, cool toy that everyone wants to get their hands on, but how do you keep them interested? How do you create that longevity? So beauty pageants are a true form of business. It's an art form where it's an attention grabber, but you have to work in order to stay and maintain relevance. But you can, yes, you can definitely change the world once you acquire that relevance. I think with the publicity, the appeal and so forth, then it puts you on a platform where a lot of people can hear what you say. And I think that's very, very key because you can then open up awareness in many topics just because you have the spotlight and so many people are interested in what you say. So I think that that is a great vehicle for that. And I like seeing things like this used for that purpose because there's a lot of room for improvement yes. here. <laughs> Absolutely, there are. And so that's why I love Miss Earth because they've had the same mission from its uh, inauguration since uh, in 2001. And there are other beauty pageants that I will say that seem to have a little bit of uh, what is their platform? Are they really utilizing it? Or are they just about the glamour? So um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of improvement that can be addressed, but Miss Earth, they know what they're doing. They draw your attention with what they think the audience wants. And then once you're there, these women actually have something to say and it's worthwhile to hear. So they do have that platform to create change for sure. Excellent. And I want to speak about some of the key issues in outreach climate crisis, racial inequality, and environmentalism. And if I may, I want to make just a little changes on the words because I think those titles in themselves are bad words. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I say, oh, let's talk about climate crisis, then it means that there's a major climate situation. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't, but as long as we say those words, there will always be a situation. Does that make sense? Yes. And I like to put these topics in a more positive wording, such as racial, racial inequality could be terms, can be put in terms of racial love or something like that. You know what I mean? I think if we change our wording, it focuses more on the positive than something is always negative. Anyways, those, that, those are my thoughts. So I'd like to speak about some of these points and uh, how they're important and how 
we can perhaps if we can tie in the business, how a business can can help themselves and others by this as well. Yes. So this is a very important question. And unfortunately, a lot of it is negative. So it's hard to create that positiveness, especially when a lot of these topics are overlooked. So it really needs to get out into the public and have them take it as at face value, which is the negativeness. So it is such an important question because there are so many people out there that do not understand the real issues. And if I were to ask you, what is killing our environment? And what are humans doing that needs to stop in order to help this planet? Now, I won't put you on the spot to ask you that, but oftentimes you'll hear plastic pollution or we need to stop using plastic straws to save the sea turtles. Or what about littering? Uh, we have all this trash on the road that we need to pick it up. And yes, those are things that we need to do and all of them have harmful consequences, but the driving force of the climate crisis, it's, that, it's not that. We, we will not save our planet by limiting the use of plastic or by picking up that candy wrapper on the side of the road. So there are four main contributors to the climate crisis, which are biodiversity loss, the water crisis, pollution, and global warming. Now, with biodiversity loss, we have deforestation, the coral reefs are dying, plant animal species are going extinct, and, well, all of this and more. And it's just wreaking havoc on our natural life cycle. Now, the water crisis poses the most immediate risk as it affects humanity and regional stability. And this includes water scarcity, rising sea levels, acidic oceans. So without fresh and balanced water, there is no life. And the lack of fresh water also leads to forced migration, causing economic class, excuse me, economic collapse, which will destroy our entire economy and all of our businesses that we've worked so hard to build up. And thirdly, we have pollution in all types, land, water, and air. However, the latter, air, it is the most pressing and it goes hand in hand with global warming. So the carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere is heating up our planet, causing global warming. And we are one degree away from a serious shift in our atmosphere, causing droughts, heat waves, famine, a decrease in our already limited water supply, entire ecosystems will collapse, and sadly, a third of all life on Earth will face extinction. And those are the serious issues that we're facing. So when I ask you, what is wrong with humanity? What have we been doing to this planet that is killing it? I don't want to hear we need to pick up our trash. That's that's not the answer. I want to hear that it's it's our limit. Uh, we have to limit our reliance on fossil fuels and switch to renewable energy. I want to hear people say, hey, let's target the 100 corporations who were responsible for 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And there are ways to greenify your business that produces a positive outcome beneficially that I also want to touch on later as well. But there's so much to this climate crisis and people aren't aware of those real issues. And aside from the main contributors, as you mentioned, I like to address other areas that people are quite blind to. For example, the inequality within the climate crisis. And did you know that 80% of people displaced by the effects of climate change were women? And developing nations, they suffer more devastation from natural disasters as they don't have the resources to cope. And here in America, specifically our southern coastal cities, they have high impoverished and minority communities who will face rising sea levels. So ultimately, we need more feminism in climate change. We need more voices from our underdeveloped and minority communities. But instead, we hear, let's recycle more. And no, these are the issues that have been around for a long time that people fail to talk about. All life, animal and human, should always take precedent over plastic. So there are just a ton of issues that people kind of overlook because they're not the mainstream top talked about to topics. And once we kind of, you know, admit to ourselves that there's a lot of devastation and negativeness out there that needs to be addressed, especially with like the Black Lives Matter movement and um, the Me Too movement, where it's shining a light on equality within climate change or equality within um, other realms of life. We also need to speak about the equality within climate change as well. Lindsay, it's almost like an overwhelm. There's so much to do. So it's much. almost like 
if you want to fix things right, get into get into government, get into politics, and make our voices heard, or something like yes. that, or see that more funds are diverted to more proper life sustaining measures. It, it's an overwhelm to do. And here we are. We're a business. We want to grow. We want to get. We want to recover or or move past where we've been in the last year. So. What can we do? What can a local business or entrepreneur do about all of this? I want to say for all of you entrepreneurs and those who are starting a new business, you are blessed with the opportunity of control. Start your business with the environment in mind. By being environmentally conscious with your business, efforts can prolong the length of your business as well as increase profits while decreasing expenses. There have been there may be expensive upfront costs uh, being eco-friendly, but in the long term, those will save you money. I feel a lot of issues with business these days are that um, some entrepreneurs like to think short term instead of long term, and that can get us into quite a bit of um, a difficult situation. So it's worth doing the research and looking into to greenify that business. And there are also a lot of tax incentives and grants that come with going green. So... Uh, you also have the um, LED system, the L their LEED system, where if you kind of have a green structure to your business and you focus on um, limiting your energy use and having um, just the ultimate foundation be well equipped to have a more energy resilient business, you get a lot of incentives by doing that. You get a lot of like cuts from the government, a lot of breaks. And that's something that's worth looking into. And a lot of people just think maybe, okay, this is too hard. This is too much to look into, or this does cost me a lot up front. But statistically, if you look at, if you look at the facts, whenever you are reliant on fossil fuel use, also that's going to run out someday. So you're putting your business in jeopardy and creating a short term mindset, because what's going to happen down the road whenever you're unable to acquire fossil fuels because we use them all up. So by switching to renewable energy, you're always going to have that energy source that will decrease costs over time and will never be um, having that influx of supply and demand because it's always going to be readily available. Whereas fossil fuels, I mean, that is subject to supply and demand. It's subject to inflation because it depends on um, how much is around, how much is left, how much will in demand that it is. So by really making just small little um, tweaks to your business in terms of just being eco-friendly, long term, no matter what, you will always have a profit and you will have that longevity, longevity and you will have a more successful business. I like that a lot. And I like the fact that we could look up whatever our business is, whether it's a service, whether it's a product or what have you, we can see what programs may be available that are close or connected to or part of that product or service. And maybe we could get some grants or some funding or something like that to help further and establish that. So those are some interesting Absolutely. things to look at. And for And if there aren't any fits, what else can we do to get involved and how can we help while we're still also trying? It almost sounds like I've just asked this question, but I'm just really trying to get into the mindset of here. We really want to move forward. We want to expand and anything else that you feel would be good for us to get involved that can also then hopefully help and flow back to us. So I feel like life is filled with karma and good energy, and I'm a person that's highly sensitive to energy, and I can feel it even as soon as the person walks in, walks into the room. And there's actually a saying, if I can remember correctly, um, your energy speaks before you do. And that always stood so powerful with me because I feel that when I see someone walk into that room. And by volunteering, I can genuinely tell you, donating my time has made me feel so fulfilled than anything I've ever done before. It genuinely puts a smile on my face and makes me feel happy when I can help some someone um, less fortunate or someone that just needs an extra helping hand. So being a business owner, you have to be empathetic. You have to be able to relate and address just the working class and your employees and just people in general. You have to know how to read your audience. You have to know how to interact with them. And by putting yourself in a 
opportunity of giving and to just be a helping hand, that's going to reflect back on you uh, mentally, physically, and emotionally. You're going to be growing as a person and as a businessman. So I feel just engaging and volunteering where you can find, you can go to volunteer.org or uh, also go onto the internet because the internet has answers to all of our questions. Type in volunteer opportunities near me and there will be a ton of websites that come up and categories that you can specifically filter to to your desire. So it can be environmental, it can be uh, social, it can be even political volunteering, anything that you are interested in. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a like a project or a job to you where you don't really want to do it. You can find something that caters to your desire. So just giving back, I feel like you'll also receive. So what you put out into the world, the karma, the gratitude, the energy, I feel will always come right back into you. And also, as I said before, just being a business, it's all about understanding your audience and being able to relate to them and to connect with them. And connection is an important thing when it comes to success, especially in business. So being able to engage on that local level, that community level, I feel like that's one of the key successes to thrive within your own self and within your business. I love that. Those great answers. Thank you. It really stimulates the idea because us entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, businessmen, we like to network. We like to meet people. We like, so help your environment, meet people, get your name out there, spread your reach. Mm -hmm and become more of that anchor in your society, even if your business or service or product is, is abroad or helps other people in the world, it's, it's an anchor and it helps you get your roots out and helps you grow in your business. So those are some very good points. And I hope that everyone can take that advice and do something with that. And I have some other questions about all of this. And one thing I want to make sure that I touch upon is Lindsay, any particular future plans or projects that you feel are more important than the other? Maybe almost two questions, but I would just like to know, where are you going with all this right now? Well, I do think about the future a lot, which I find it is very important too. Also, you don't want to get lost in it. The present is just as important, especially when running that business. Um, I am developing a game plan. And this beauty pageants, my activism, modeling, this is a business. Everything nowadays is a business and we need to brand ourselves and align ourselves with our business and with our goals. And people have asked me how my life has changed after winning Miss Earth. And I answered, well, it didn't necessarily change. I'm doing everything I did before, except now it's amplified. And that's what my future will be for me. I'll continue to be doing what I'm doing but amplified. And it's important to take note of small progressional steps as so many people look to the future and see their end goal and only their end goal. And yes, we must think big to succeed big, but if you minimize the smaller accomplishments and focus on one main giant goal, that's too daunting to think of every day. That's how people experience burnouts and an inevitable reduction in motivation. So for me, my amplification can be rounding up more volunteers, speaking at larger summits and conferences, um, expanding that audience and platform, um, traveling more in the name of the cause. So I like to think my future is holding a lot. You know, I feel... Miss Earth validated my purpose in life and revealed a path that I know to follow now. So I'm really excited about the future and to see where it leads. One small amplification at a time. Exactly. And there are many, many situations, problems, and issues as we've, as we've spoken throughout this interview. Is there any area that you are focusing on more than any because you feel it's the most urgent or the most critical to focus on any particular type of outreach? So my platform competing for Miss Earth was the water crisis. As I mentioned before, it does pose the most immediate risk to humanity and regional stability. So I would like to address our waters and um, ocean conservation because there is a thing called blue economy where our oceans, a lot of people don't know this, but our oceans dictate our life on land. It um, addresses the economy. It addresses our health. It addresses um, our wealth. So 
there's a lot of issues that are tied into our oceans and addressing ocean conservation is a real passion of mine and being able to um, even express the benefits of our ocean when it comes to even solving the climate crisis, because there are a lot of uh, benefits that the ocean has where they have their natural cleansing properties that can withdraw the excess CO2 from our atmosphere. And it's they just have this natural built in work system that we have unfortunately overridden due to our own uh, behavioral um, behaviors. But if we can focus on restoring our oceans and our coral reefs and just aquatic um, ecosystems, that will really translate beneficially on land and as well in our atmosphere. But we will see a surplus um, in our health again and in, and in our wealth and just in our economy. It's a very interesting point. You would think with oceans that Mother Nature and so forth would naturally take care of things. Things would naturally clean. What can we do? We live, we live in the Midwest. We live in Canada. We live in Europe. We live in Africa. We're in the mainland. There's no ocean. There's rivers by us. What can we do and how can our, can, can our business, our, our life deal with and help preserve and increase and grow? Well, the ocean doesn't necessarily grow, but we don't want it to grow too much, but grow in a proper, grow with life, grow with life, not grow in, uh, in height. Yes. Okay. Well, you can actually, so everything is connected. Everything on this planet is connected and every one of our behaviors has a consequence and it's up to us. We are given the option of choice. So our, the choices that we make, we have the power, the capability to choose whether that consequence is positive or negative. Same with our business. So when it comes to ocean conservation, yeah, I live in, say you live in Iowa, like you're nowhere near the ocean. So what are you going to do to help conserve it? So just for example, um, we have, okay, organic products that you can shop locally and buy just organic, um, non-chemical uh, products that you use that wash down the drain. Say your shampoo or your facial cleanser, your toothpaste, literally anything that we use in our day-to-day -day lives that wash down the drain that is filled with, say, chemicals and products that, well, fascinatingly enough, are not banned in the U.S., even though they're banned everywhere else in the world. Um, having that wash down our drains through our pipes into our fresh water, as well as into our oceans, those chemicals are now released into aquatic life and aquatic ecosystems. And so all of those chemicals are polluting our waters, which are causing deoxinization. They're causing um, um, an increase of carbonic acid and Interestingly enough, you think that it would stop there. Yes, it is killing our um, marine species. However, even though we're dumping the chemicals into the, our ocean, we think, okay, well, it's still not affecting my life, but it is. So say you have that carbonic acid buildup, um, that wa ocean water is then vaporized and stores up into our clouds. And then what happens to the water in our clouds? Well, that turns into precipitation. But all that carbonic acid, the acidic water that is stored now into our clouds, turn into acidic rain, which fall down and touch every piece of land on this entire earth, as well as our crops there in Iowa. So now our crops, our business, or if you're a farmer, our waters, we're, we're watering our crop with acidic acidic water, acidic rain. And that is... That is um, affecting the life cycle of our of our crops, the natural life cycle, as well as the nutrition that we're getting from our crops, the growth process, whether it's how fast it's growing or how big it's growing, everything is being affected. So in turn, you're not going to have that great of a cell or that great of a season because your crops are not growing fast enough. They're not growing big enough. They're not going to have much nutrition and no one's going to want to buy it. So you have to think big, especially when it comes to our agricultural industry, um, that everything is affected by our actions, whether we choose to have I, those consequences be positive or negative. So we have the power of control. We can control what we put out into our waters. And that way we can control what we put really into our pockets, how much money we put in there, if you're a farmer or not, and just in any other terms of business. Because if you're going to focus on growing a hardy and abundant um, crop, well, then you have to focus on what your 
you know, dumping to our waters so you can get back as, you know, a healthy crop as you can. That's very good. You went full circle. If you want to eat, I did. If you want to eat better food, be mindful of your chemicals and what you're throwing down the drain. So be very cautious, yes. be very careful about that and properly dispose of anything that you feel would be very harsh. Do your part, do some part, at least you're aware because the whole of the whole part of this, I think one of the key focuses, the key takeaways for me is an increased awareness that we are on a world. Yeah. It's not just the box of your room, even though some of us haven't journeyed very far lately. Some of us haven't, you know, I've met, I've run into people regularly that don't travel very far in their whole entire life, which is a little bit different per, from perhaps the entrepreneur or the small business or the business owner mindset where we travel a lot. I think some of us do a lot of travel, but there are people they've never been miles away. It's almost, it's almost like that, uh, that scene out of Lord of the Rings where Samwise Ganji never went past that cornfield, you know, before he went on his journey is just sometimes <laughs> we just get stuck in that mindset. So our awareness Absolutely. is increased by this and, Eat, and it's just being aware of like, oh, I don't want to th throw this down the drain. This is sulfuric acid. I'm just kind of making that up. What are you doing no, with sulfuric acid in your house? But anyway, <laughs> don't turn it. Don't don't throw it down the drain. It's little things completely. like that that help start to 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 create a better balance, even though we can't go out there and pick up all the plastic that we're told is in the oceans, for example. Yes. And we can do things like. And speaking of plastics, and, and we are told you can search it, you know, there's like miles and miles of plastic islands in the ocean. So, oh, yes. The largest one being the Great Pacific uh, Garbage Patch in the Pacific Ocean. I don't know I think that I believe that, but, I, but I, I hear that a lot. But I like the Pacific Ocean. I live by the Pacific Ocean and I don't see any garbage floating at all. But that doesn't mean. Oh, it's that, way out there. Yeah, it's way out there. Right. <laughs> So, but it's just the mindset of, you know, it's, it's, it's a littering thing when you get to that. There's no yeah. reason to just take things no and throw it out your car. I've seen, I've seen oh. drivers and sometimes when, when I have that opportunity and I've shocked people is I'll honk, I'll roll down my window. Yeah. I see some driver just eat something and throw it out the window. I honk and I'll say, excuse it's me, you just dropped something. Yeah, it's please continue. Time. It's you have to do it when it's safe. You know, it has to yes, be a very yes. safe maneuver. But it just yes. freaks them out, like because some people just instinctively throw things. So be yes. mindful of litter, even though it has it may not have anything to do with your job, but it has a lot to do yes. with somebody else's job and the economy. Absolutely. And if you want people spending their money picking that up, you'd rather have them spend money buying your services and products. I think I think we could Absolutely. draw parallels and full circle on just about everything on this. Literally everything is full circle. You can find a connection to anything these days. So there you go. So just be good, live a good life, and everything comes back and you have a good business. How simple that was. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> Great. Any last, uh, anything that you feel we, we would want to talk about? We have just a few minutes left. Anything else that you think is very important about this to talk yes. about? Yes. Go for it. Of course. So um, I know just even just kind of going off of what we were talking about, um, just being aware and being successful. So. I know self-awareness, I feel, is the single most character beneficial characteristic I feel like a human being can have. So I read a lot of psychological books uh, or psychology books and research studies, try, just trying to understand myself better as well as the behavior of others. And I know you, I mean, you have a lot of entrepreneurs and listeners in the business realm. And I feel my journey with Miss Earth is a similar journey in business. It's about knowing your brand knowing how to represent yourself and knowing how you want others to perceive you. And most importantly, understanding that audience that we've discussed. So when you're trying for a promotion or creating a business from the ground up, there, there's a lot of questions that are raised within yourself and they're not the most endearing questions. So we must remember that sometimes the greatest obstacles that we face in life is ourselves. And I challenged myself through doubt in the rise of my own insecurities and our ability to grow as human beings is abundant. However, we 
force ourselves into a limited mental capacity with limit, limited beliefs. And many of these are instilled within us through society, our parents, or even our own fear of failure. And I often questioned my ability to make a difference because of my background, my education, my career. Who was I to attempt to become an agent of change some random girl from a town no one's heard of who did not study any form of environmental science, a full-time model, a nobody, especially within the activism and environmental realm. So I was completely stepping outside of my comfort zone and like my area of expertise. Yet I knew that I wanted to see a change in the world. I knew of my love for this planet and I knew of the lack of knowledge and motivation humanity had to do something about it. So that's when I chose to jump in I did not crawl, walk. I didn't even look where I was going. I just took a giant leap of faith and I allowed myself to become vulnerable and I left that comfort zone. So I joined the Miss Earth organization and began my journey with uncertainness, an incredible amount of nerves, and I was full of doubt. I had no support, but I kept my head down. I focused on my platform and I came out, as you said, the first U.S. representative in history to win the international title. So soon after I realized my potential and I continued to work on unlocking it, I exceeded the ex the limitations that I set upon myself. And now I'm the most driven I have ever been in my life. And I visualize daily the woman that I wish to be. So my advice to anyone, to aspiring entrepreneurs, to climate activists, even if you're scared uncomfortable and filled with uncertainty, you're out of your comfort zone and you've never done this before, just remember that your passion is more powerful than your doubt and move forward, show others, show the world, and most importantly, show yourself that you too are an unstoppable force just like mother nature is. So I always like to share those words of inspiration, you can say, because I mean, even whenever you're thinking of something that has nothing to do with the business that you want, just even learning about self-awareness, the awareness around you, connecting with others, being a better person, all of that, those are the foundations, the fundamental aspects and characteristics that you need to grow a good business. Nothing's ever straightforward where I'm going to take a business 101 class, I'm going to be successful. No, there are so many other things in life that you need to unlock within yourself, your compassion, your empathy, your connection with people, your ability to grow, your ability to understand yourself, understand your audience, understand the behaviors of the other people. That is what is a successful business runs on. That is how you succeed in your business and you succeed in your own personal life. So step outside your comfort zone, pick up some trash on the side of the road, engage with people that you don't typically engage with, do something kind for someone. All of that will help you grow as a person, therefore will help you grow as a business. Well said. I love it. Thank you so much for that. Once again, we spoke with Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffee, and you can find her at lindsay-coffee.com. Remember that dash, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y dash C-O-F-F-E-Y.com. It's probably one of our favorite words now, coffee. Very <laughs> easy to remember, lindsay-coffee.com. Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing. Again, you've brought more awareness to us, and it's more than just us in this myop myopic little box view of our business. You've, you've brought the whole world upon us, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me while I featured an elite entrepreneur who took her vision to reality. I'm enthused and inspired. That was pretty cool, huh? We spoke with Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffey. She's a model and environmental activist whose talents led her to be crowned the first U.S. representative as Miss Earth in 2020. And we talked about what kind of work she did for Miss Earth. And we talked about how does a beauty pageant really help the world? We spoke of a number of key issues we should keep our attention on and do what we can to be mindful of our world and help our environment in the ways that we can, no matter where we live. And we spoke about what outreach we can do now and how that can come back to us as a local business or entrepreneur. You know, it's all about raising awareness and getting involved, no matter how small you think it is. And the saying is true, every little bit helps. I think that about wraps it up for now on this. 
I love this interview and I really do hope that you get inspired and that you find it helpful in your business and share this with a few friends to help them too. All right, use this and let's help you move on your journey to success. Thanks and remember, just take action. Success awaits those who persevere and remain steadfast despite the odds. Sow good seeds, do good deeds, and join me on the next episode of The Tony D'Urso Show. We hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of The Tony D'Urso Show with his key influencers. Be sure to tune in again next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Influencers Channel. 